Michael Moore to our stage, and we'll first give him a round of applause because he's going to talk about appraisals. And for us to be able to do this business, you actually have to know the after repair value. Well, the only way you get the after repair value is if you know kind of how to do an appraisal. So without, we'll let Michael. Okay, thank you. I think I was here, was it a year ago or two years ago? About a year ago, I came and talked to you folks. Um, when they asked me to come and talk to you tonight, they, they didn't really have a topic, but I saw on the screen here that I'm supposed to be talking tonight about what you're to do and not to do when you buy a house. So we can start on talking about residential properties. Um, do most of you buy them? To sell, to resell, or do you buy them to keep as rentals? Buy and hold. Buy and hold. Buy and hold. So you're going to be renting them out. Okay. Buy and then turn around and sell them. Okay. Well, you know, there's a lot of flippers out there. You ever watch these TV shows on? on uh, they're in a different world, aren't they? Out in California, mm -hmm. they buy for five hundred forty thousand. We can put one hundred forty thousand in it, and somehow they get. Uh, they put it on for $790 and they get $810. Uh, that's not our market here in the Dayton, Ohio area. Even though it is ticking up, I think, and it's uh, starting to improve. Folks, when you're buying residential properties, and, and I can talk about, uh, I've bought and sold several properties over, over the years. Uh, but from an appraisal standpoint, okay, uh, Depends on the price range you're in. I mean, if you're buying in a, in a price range that, let's say, uh, twenty-five thousand or less, versus, uh, uh, I had a student one time I teach over at uh, St. Clair College, uh, the appraisal class. There, maybe some of you folks have been in that class. But you know, I had one student that that actually was buying and and uh, and is flipping. Uh, houses that are quarter of a million and on up. So that's a different market too. So uh, when you're buying a house for an investment, I always tell my son-in-law, I've helped him, I, that's why I've had a broker's license for 40 years. And I keep it mainly for my son-in-law, so when he wants to go buy something, then I can help him, help him out a little bit. But I tell my son-in-law, I said, when you, when you see a good deal out there, let it go. Because if it's not a great deal, then you might have some real serious problems. Okay? Because there's always surprises. I think most of you in here will know that there's surprises when you buy a piece of property. From once you get into it, you tear out something, and then there's, there's another problem you didn't foresee. So when people ask me about, let, let me give you some examples here. Someone will call me up as an appraiser, and they'll say, Mike, we want to put an addition on the back of our house, and it's going to cost $30,000. The first thing I ask them, of course, is where is, it, where is it located? But the thing I ask them then is, what's the range What's the range of the value of your neighborhood right now? And they'll say, well, it's about 140000 to about 170000 I said, okay, it's 140 to 170000 is the range. I said, what's the value of your house in your opinion right now of, in that neighborhood within that range? We're probably in the middle portion of the range. We're probably around 150, 155. I tell them then, if you put 30,000 in it, you're going to have 180, 185, and the range is going to remain the same at 140 to 170. So keep that in mind. If you improve something and you go outside of the range, okay, then you really narrow the potential of, of getting a good return on your investment and, and, and reselling if that's what you're